Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're diving into something that's always fascinated me, this idea of moral forces in warfare. We're going to be using Clausewitz on war to guide us. Clausewitz really is the gold standard, even centuries later. What's amazing about On War is how much it focuses on the human side of conflict. I think that's something we can all relate to, even if we haven't experienced war firsthand. Today we'll be focusing on chapters 3 and 4 of Book 3, where he really digs into these moral forces. So moral forces, i got to be honest, it's kind of vague term. What exactly did Clausewitz mean by that? Yeah, he even admits it's one of those things that's really hard to define. Like he says they escape from all book knowledge, hmm. that you can't just quantify them. How do you even begin to study something like that if it's so slippery? Well, Clausewitz breaks it down into three main categories. First, you've got the commander's talents, their natural leadership ability. Then there's the army's military, virtue, think, discipline, courage, that sort of thing. And finally, you have the national feeling, what we might call patriotism, or a sense of shared identity. But here's where it gets really interesting. Clausewitz doesn't see these moral forces in isolation. He links them directly to the physical battlefield. Wait, so you're telling me hills and forests can actually influence which moral force matters most? Exactly. He says different types of battlefields actually favor different kinds of spirit, so to speak. Like in rough mountainous terrain, Clausewitz says it's the national feeling that really comes to the forefront. Now that you mention it, that makes sense. Mountain warfare often involves smaller units operating independently, relying on their instincts, their knowledge of the land. Right, and that takes a certain kind of commitment. You've got to be willing to fight tooth and nail for every inch of ground, no matter what. And Clausewitz knew this firsthand from his own experiences in the Napoleonic Wars. He wasn't just writing from an ivory tower. He was right there in the thick of it. But what about those massive open battlefields? How do those factor into his theory of moral forces? Well... On those kinds of battlefields, Clausewitz says military virtue, that discipline, that almost instinctive courage, that's where it becomes absolutely essential. It's like those ancient Roman legions you always hear about, holding the line against all odds. Exactly. And Clausewitz argues that on open battlefields where, you know, holding the line, maintaining cohesion, that could be the difference between victory and complete disaster. That's where that military virtue is so important. So much of it is psychological, isn't it? You need that shared sense of purpose, that trust in the ranks. Otherwise, you'd just crumble under that kind of pressure. Absolutely. And here's where Clausewitz links military virtue back to those other moral forces. He says, even in these massive battles where it seems like, you know, one soldier's actions wouldn't matter that much, the commander's spirit, it can actually filter down through the ranks and affect the troops' morale. It's yeah. like a chain, right? A yeah. chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Even a moment of hesitation, a little bit of doubt, it can spread and have these huge ripple effects. Exactly. On the flip side, a commander who's confident and decisive, like picture Napoleon rallying his troops, that can completely change the game. So it's not enough to just drill formations and maneuvers. Yeah. You need to build that sense of shared purpose, that fighting spirit. All right, exactly. We haven't really talked about that third kind of battlefield Clausewitz talks about. Not the open plains, not the mountains, but that kind of in-between space. Yeah, those areas with rolling hills, thick forests, maybe some villages scattered around. That's where things get really interesting tactically. That's where Clausewitz says the commander's talents, their ability to read the situation, that becomes the most important thing. Makes sense. You've got to adapt to the terrain, outmaneuver your opponent. It's a lot more about strategy than just brute force. Exactly. It's about being able to see those opportunities, you know, those little advantages that pop up and seize them. It's like in chess when a really skilled player can beat a stronger opponent just by outsmarting them. So how do all these moral forces work together in those complex situations? Clausewitz says even though the commander's talents are super important on these kinds of battlefields, those other moral forces, the military virtue, the national feeling, they're still crucial. It's like, even with a brilliant plan, you need a disciplined army to carry it out. Exactly. And that's where national feeling comes in, too. A soldier who believes in what they're fighting for, they're going to be much more likely to show that discipline, that courage under pressure. It's about having a deeper reason to fight, not just following orders blindly. Right. Now, Clausewitz, he was writing in the 19th century, right after those huge Napoleonic Wars, which were some of the biggest conflicts the world had ever seen. And armies back then, they were a lot different than they are now, right? In some ways, yeah. Clausewitz yeah. actually said that back then, European armies, they were starting to become more and more alike. Their training, their equipment, it was all becoming standardized. So if armies were becoming more similar, 
wouldn't that make the you know the physical stuff like how many troops you had what kind of weapons wouldn't that be even more important you'd think so right but that's where Clausewitz makes a really interesting point he says that as armies become more evenly matched in terms of you know the physical stuff those intangible factors those moral forces they actually become even more important for deciding who wins it's like he's predicting a future where wars aren't just won on battlefields but also in people's minds exactly and that's why Clausewitz's work is still so relevant today, because warfare, well, it's changed a lot since the 19th century. I mean, we've gone from muskets and cannons to drones and cyber warfare. Yeah. So how do Clausewitz's ideas about moral forces apply in the 21st century? That's the million dollar question. It's something that, you know, military leaders today, they wrestle with all the time. How do you foster that military virtue, that discipline and courage in a world where information and misinformation travels at the speed of light? It's definitely a whole different ball game than lining up in those neat formations on a battlefield. Absolutely. And then there's the question of national feeling. In a world with global conflicts and, you know, groups like terrorist organizations. The lines are blurred. Exactly. It gets really complex. So how do we even begin to understand those moral forces in the context of modern warfare? It's not as easy as just pointing to a commander's speech or... or you know, measuring the troops' morale. Right? It's definitely not that simple. Hmm. But in a way, those moral forces might be even more important today. It's just that they they look different now. How so? Well, take military virtue, for instance. Yeah. Back in Clausewitz's day, it was all about, like you said, holding the line, obeying orders without question. Right, like those classic paintings of soldiers marching in formation, <laughs> muskets blazing. Exactly. But warfare today. It's just not like that anymore. Not at all. So what does military virtue look like in the 21st century? Good question. Think about, say, a small team of special forces soldiers dropped into a hostile territory. They've got to be able to operate independently, make life or death decisions on the fly, often without being able to contact command. That takes an incredible amount of discipline, courage, and trust. It's like the battlefield itself has gotten a whole lot bitter and more complicated. Absolutely. Or think about drone pilots fighting a war from thousands of miles away. The mental toughness that that requires to stay focused, to deal with the, the emotional weight of what they're doing. That's another example of how military virtue is evolving. It's amazing how technology changes the whole picture, isn't it? We've got to update our whole vocabulary, even for these age-old concepts. And what about national feeling? That was one of Clausewitz's big ones, right? Mm. How does that translate to a world with global conflicts and, and you know, these non-state actors like terrorist groups? You've hit on a really crucial point. It's not just about patriotism in the traditional sense anymore. It's more about the shared values, the beliefs that bind a fighting force together that give them a sense of purpose. It's about making sure everyone's on the same page, understanding the bigger picture. Exactly. And it's not just within the military either. Think about the importance of clear communication, of combating misinformation, of building a sense of resilience within society as a whole. Because an attack on a nation's infrastructure, like a cyber attack on the power grid, it can be just as devastating as a physical attack, right? Absolutely. So that sense of national unity, that we're all in this together, that's more important than ever. It's like the home front and the battlefield, they're not so separate anymore. Exactly. And that brings us to the role of the commander, which Clausewitz identified as the, the first and arguably most important moral force. And that's changed a lot too, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's not just about being a brilliant tactician anymore. The modern commander, they've got to be able to navigate this incredibly complex landscape of, of politics, social dynamics, technology. They've got to be master communicators too, right? Almost like PR experts. Exactly. Shaping the narrative, maintaining morale in the age of instant information. Those are essential skills for any leader today. It's about inspiring your own people while also understanding, even anticipating, the enemy's mindset. It makes you realize, for all our technological advances, warfare still comes down to human beings. At its core, yes. And that's what makes Clausewitz so brilliant. He understood that. He was way ahead of his time. Well, I think this has given us a lot to think about. Me too. It's a good reminder that to really understand war, to really be successful in war, you have to go beyond just the numbers and the hardware. You have to understand the human element, the psychology of conflict. Like you said earlier, it's that human element that's often the most unpredictable, the most decisive factor. Exactly. Well, on that note, thanks to everyone for joining us on this deep dive into the enduring relevance of Clausewitz's moral forces. It's a topic that's sure to keep us all thinking 
and I'm sure debating for a long time to come.